have got a special guest here on The Real Well Show today who's going to share how he went from being a janitor to buying his first rental property in college to now owning over $2 billion in real estate. Talk about scaling. You've probably heard of Ken McElroy, known as one of the Rich Dad Advisors. You may have also heard him at our virtual book launch last week. Well, we loved that interview so much that we decided to run it here on The Real Well Show. I'm Kathy Fetke, and welcome. You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Rich and I asked Ken for an interview for our book, Scaling Smart, How to Design a Self-Managing Business, and he offered some great nuggets. You can check that out by buying our book, Scaling Smart, at Amazon or at the Bigger Pockets bookstore. The audiobook is still number one in new releases, so we're very grateful for that. Well, we asked Ken to also participate in our virtual book launch, and one of the questions we asked is if the quality of life has diminished as his portfolio has grown. In other words, as he got bigger, did life also get harder? His answer was no, I got smarter. While Ken has certainly put in the work and the time to grow his business, you'll be amazed to learn that he now just spends 90 minutes a week managing it. Ken's expertise spans multifamily properties, commercial developments, property management, and strategic investing, which he shares in this conversation. Beyond his real estate ventures, he's also a successful podcaster, YouTuber, and best-selling author. So here's the interview. Enjoy. What's happening, guys? What's happening? Good to see you, brother. Great seeing you. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we really appreciate you being here. And we know your story is so amazing. I'm sure a lot of our, I, I imagine it, most of the people here know who you are, but Ken McElroy has built a billion dollar business in multifamily. Um, he's written many books. Uh, I don't want to mess that up. So Ken, what are some of your most popular books? Well, the Probably the first one, which is the ABCs of real estate investing. Uh, this is the 20th year. I wrote it 20 years ago. So. Wow. It's, yeah. it's the Bible of real estate. Yeah, you got to read it. <laughs> it's awesome. I actually have a bio here for Ken for, for the few people right. don't don't okay. know him. So yep. let me just read this. And uh, then what we're going to do is go into a and a with the goat and uh, get get some answers. And then so please feel free to put any questions you might have in the Q&A um, window there, and we will uh, do our best to get those to Ken, um, but we also have our own questions. So let me just start with this. Ken McElroy is a seasoned real estate entrepreneur, author, and speaker based in Arizona. As co-founder and CEO of MC Companies, Ken leads a national multifamily investment company with a portfolio spanning over 9,000 units across Arizona, Texas, and Oklahoma, valued at over $2 billion. Ken's journey in real estate, and I want to ask you a little bit about this, Ken, uh, during his college years, it began during his college years when he purchased his first investment property. So I want to hear that story a little bit, Ken. I want you to share that with us. And over the years, he's built an impressive portfolio and developed expertise in leveraging debt and managing cash flow. So if you have questions about leveraging debt and managing cash flow, Ken's the man. Um, Ken's notable collaborations include partnering with Robert Kiyosaki. So he is uh, Robert Kiyosaki's real estate advisor and uh, co-authoring several books. And he also conducts seminars and um, just has an amazing YouTube channel as well. Amazing podcasts. So just good stuff. Um, And like Ken said, ABCs of uh, Real Estate Investing, and The Sleeping Giant uh, is also a great book about entrepreneurs. Um, he interviewed several entrepreneurs and put that into that book. And he also has a great uh, parable, kind of like the wise, inve- it inspired the wise investor uh, called A Return to Orchard Canyon, which is a great one as well. And so Ken also has his own publishing company now uh, that publishes a whole bunch of different authors' books. Including the wise investor. Including the wise investor. Yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful for that. All right. Come on, don't forget about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, I would love to just start just a real quick, like your origin story. What got you into real estate investing? Well, I I don't know if any of us actually uh, um, strategically decide to go there. You know, at least at least back when I started, uh, I I think a lot of us 
you know, around friends or family or, you know, maybe a circle of influence, which, uh, yeah, I'd love to discuss a little bit more. You know, I, I got lucky. I got um, around some folks that were in the property management and investment business in college. And they asked me simply, would you manage this property? Uh, which I, of course, said yes, because it was free rent. And so uh, <laughs> that's how I got into the game. Literally, uh, so I, I was... You know, I had student debt, just like a lot of people. Um, my my mom and uh, my my mom's a hairdresser, was a hairdresser. She's still alive. My dad um, is, was in construction, and uh, you know, so I had a very blue collar upbringing, like a lot of people, I think. And and um, you know, never dreamed ever that you know I would be in a position that I am today. But I, I ended up just simply collecting rents and fixing stuff, like because I. We never had a contractor at my house ever because my dad was in the Seabees in, in, in the Navy, and um, which is a construction battalion. And, and uh, so, you know, I learned how to do everything. I knew how to do everything. Mm. And, and so I just, you know, I just applied those skills uh, to an apartment building while I was finishing up school and collecting rent. And and it was a real eye opener for me. Um, and, um, uh, you know, there, I felt like property management was a, is a pretty basic skill. Like, I, like what I mean is, People make it complicated, but it's not like mm -hmm. uh, just follow a, you know a few rules. Uh, and for me, it was like okay, get people in here that can pay and and that are nice, you know, and maintain the building. And um, you know, and if you do that, the math uh, works out. But sometimes, depending on how you finance it and all that stuff that we learn later. But at the time, I felt like if I just keep this place full. I'm going to minimize the time and I can finish my school and all that. And so it was a little 60 unit building and um, it was awesome. And, th and then from there, I got my real estate license and I decided to, I, I, I like this business. I like the freedom. I like the cash flow. I got to understand the cash flow. You know, there was an ownership of the building. Um, and so I really got thrust into it, you know, in, in my early 20s. And, and I was like, I, I really like this. I like, the guy, you know, I got a chance to interact with the property management folks and the and the owner and 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 try to figure out how they were doing stuff, and um, I just I'm like, man, this is the path for me, you know. And I I was I was a little confused in college, you know. I had a I was getting my business and marketing and uh, finance and 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 I I just didn't know where to take it. So, um, you know, as as a lot of young young, young folks, um, you you gotta sometimes just seize the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. So how did you go from, because this is all about scaling today, how did you go from doing everything yourself to scaling up to over 9,000 units? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I I, I think, uh, uh, first, I appreciate the question. I, I think what happens is we go through different stages as a, as a person, right? Like, we don't really have wisdom in our 20s, even though when you're 20, you think you have all of it, you know. Um, <laughs> but I, I think what I mean by that is in the 20s, you know, based on how I grew up and, you know, where I was trying to go, I felt like I was just trying to punch through um, maybe uh, maybe bars that I had put on myself or ceilings, I guess is probably the best way to say. Mm. Um, and I was just trying to survive. I was just trying to figure out how to pay off my student debt, how to uh, cover my expenses. I didn't know the term passive income or anything like that, but I did know that um, if I managed a property well, it would produce income. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just being in the business. Uh, so I think in my 20s, I wasn't trying to build a business or scale. I, I was, I was, I was trying to figure out who I was and what, you know, and, and slowly just, you know, hitting singles. <laughs> trying to trying to understand how to do it. I didn't know how to buy it. I didn't know how to buy property. I didn't know how to finance property. I certainly didn't have any money. Um, and but I didn't know how to manage it. And so what I what I I think probably what I learned in my 20s was that if I became really good at property management, which is exactly what I did, um, I would be needed by other people. And it was a skill that I could be good at. So I, I poured myself into um, you know, obviously the real estate uh, education and all those kinds of things, but any seminars that I could go to, that's where I met Tommy Hopkins and, you know, a bunch of the old guys started going then. And then also I got my CPM, my certified public or my certified property manager. Mm. Um, 
designation. I, 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 I was in, I was a part of the Arizona and the multi housing association and then the, the, the Nevada, I mean, I'm sorry, the national apartment association. And, and I was, I was in all the circles and trying to meet as many people as I could to try to be the best that I could, not necessarily to grow my business, mm. uh, but just to really be the best property manager that I could. And that served me well, cause that's the kind of the core for everything that I learned, the network that I got, and then what? Well, then I decided to start my property management company. That's actually the first. That's the first thing I did. I started a company way back called McElroy Management, and I started to manage properties for other people. And that's when I started to kind of lift the hood and understand about partnerships and syndication. And and you know, I'm managing for you know, like let's say folks like like you and Kathy, and I'm I'm in a room and we're talking about not just property management, but all kinds of stuff. How'd you meet this person? How'd you meet that person? How'd you do that? And so, so I was I I, I felt like I came in really nicely, um, and I was um, always in demand. Like as you guys know, the properties are the you can raise money. It's probably the easiest part. The the mm. the. The second easiest part is to find them, and then the uh, the hardest part is managing them, right? Yeah. In my opinion, um, and so so I had that skill. Uh, although I think a lot of people flip that around, um, and they, they you know, I, I, my experience is a lot of people choose property management at the end. Like I've had, I have so many stories yeah. where investors call me in the eleventh hour and said, "I'm buying something tomorrow," you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, and. You know, you know, that's going to be a disaster. So, but I, <laughs> I, I, uh, so that's, you know, so in my twenties, that's kind of what I did. And then in my thirties, I got the, I had built my management company and I'm like, now it's time to build my wealth through acquisitions. And, uh, that's when I, um, um, uh, started my first company then. And I, and I, and I did that. And then I joined forces with my current partner, Ross. Um, and, you know, it, it was a slow, methodical, uh, you know, our first goal was a thousand units. You know, our second goal was 5,000 units. Our next goal was 10,000 units. And, and, you know, we hit all those. But, um, it, you know, I just we always believed in just hitting singles. Um, you know, there's there's a lot more risk with big deals and, and you know, putting everything at, at risk. You know, like I was always afraid of losing what I had. Um, mm. And so I was always just kind of minimizing forward, which actually works out. If, if you have a long term strategy, you don't have to lay it all on the line each time. And um, and so, you know, that's that's what we've done. I, I, I it's hard for me to believe today that our company is worth what it is. I never set out ever for it mm. to be that way. Um, and, um, you know, it, it always just started with just honestly hitting singles. It still kind of is. I mean, like, um, you still worry about losing what you got? No, it, it's different now. Um, but that's a good question. I let's put it this way: every single time, though, I buy something. We just bought a ninety million dollar project uh, three weeks ago in Las Vegas, and um, you know, I always am like, okay, my, my partner, both and I, Ross, we're like, what did we miss? Like, you know, like. <laughs> What did yeah. we miss? Like, yeah. why, you know, you know, every single time I, I always am questioning, even with all the experience and all the stuff we've done, we probably bought, you know, well over 3 billion now. Um, and cause we've exited a fair amount of them. And, um, but I, 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 um, I, you know, we, we never, we never, we never set out to do this. I didn't know. I always had faith that I would be able to figure out the next chapter, whatever that might be. So when I got to a thousand units, you know, we needed better uh, counting and bookkeeping and systems. And, you know, your book, Scaling Smart is right. You know, it's 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 perfectly um, suited for this this piece, because as you point out in that book, there's a huge difference between scaling and growth. Mm -hmm. Huge, like a big difference. And, and so you know, and I, I think that, um, and then also in my forties and fifties, what happens is you start to, again, you refine it. Okay. This is a business that, you know, I can actually potentially scale. Um, this is a business that, um, you know, I had made a lot of mistakes on hiring over those, over that period of time. 
Um, and, you know, and, and I started to build culture. I started to figure out my values and my vision and make sure they were aligned, just like you also point out in the book. And, and so there's all these things that happen, I think, as you become a little more wise and you realize that, um, you know, in the early days, it really is kind of transactional and survival. But then yeah. I think probably as my buddy calls half, you know, at halftime, he calls it halftime at halftime, you kind of do things that are a little more meaningful, a little more culture, a little more giving back, a little more, you know, philanthropy based, um, you know, the why starts to come out. But I think uh, everybody's running a little scared when they're young. At least I was <laughs> a lot of my friends, yeah, hungry. Were, you know, just try not to fail. Right. So there was a question earlier from someone about, you know, how do I find the right property managers or the right manager and hiring? And you, you just said that you've made mistakes in hiring in the past. When you flip that over the mistakes, mm -hmm. what, what advice would you have on that one? Like, how do you find the right person for yeah. the role? Um, well, there, th there's a, there's a, there's a few things I think that's really important. Um, the, the first thing is, um, it's not the company, it's the person. That's a really important distinction. So just because you're going to a company that's been around for 20 or 30 years or 50 years, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a good a property manager. You know, the property manager might suck, right? So it's really important to, to, to now, with the big company, you get systems and accounting and all that kind of stuff. But it's all meaningless if the person can't manage property. So, yeah. um, so it's always best that you um, that you get both. Now, I will tell you the other thing is if you think about it, this is true. If you look at like employees and where they want to work, um, always the top tier employees, and I'm talking about the ones that are pouring themselves into the industry. Um, the ones that are uh, always doing personal development, the ones that are going to seminars and, and trying to stay on top of the current laws and all that kind of stuff, they're always working at the top companies, you know, because mm -hmm. there's uh, opportunities to advance and there's opportunities for all that kind of stuff. So you're always going to have not, you know, in, in most cases, you're going to have the very best people working for the very best companies that offer them the very best opportunities to move up financially and all that kind of stuff. So, so everybody else is kind of, um, you know, cycling, I guess, the, you know, call it the lower 90%, you know, the people that are always on the market and the people that are jumping around from property to property. Um, so there's, it's just like hiring anybody. I think you, you, you got to take a look at um, the circumstances, their work history, um, it never lines up. It, you know, for me, it's it's. I, I look for attitude, which is actually uh, probably my number one thing. Yeah. I, I believe you can teach any you can teach anybody anything if they're open, but if they're not, you can't. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the first thing. But the second thing is I look for longevity. So uh, you know, uh, three, four, five years at a property, ten years at a company. Uh, you know, they've been promoted. Uh, those kinds of things that, you know, we don't see as much on resumes uh, anymore, but, but uh, those are important things. So when I'm, when I'm bringing somebody into our company, I'm looking for somebody who started as a property manager and then they became a property director and then they became a regional, let's say, and then, you know, and all of a sudden they're, you know, they're in these uh, better positions and, and the company recognized them um, and the company um, took care of them and, and and there's a circumstance of why they're moving or leaving or you, you know a lot of times it's relocation based and so so I get into the the person really really uh, that's the most important thing and right. then I look at the systems that they have because you can even have a good person with bad systems you know like you can have mm. somebody manage your property well but they they're, the accounting at the company sucks so so I kind of look for that perfect match of the two and um, and that's primarily what we're looking for when we're when we're bringing onboarding people now that's really good that's when when we have a, a problem with someone or employee in the past or you know even currently that's we either we look at two things is it a 
person problem, a people problem, or is it a process problem? So is it something wrong with this person where they don't have the yeah. attitude that they don't match our core values? Or is it that they they are great in that area, but they just don't have the right clear process? And that falls on us as leaders and, you know, for the company, better defined process too. Or are they just in the wrong seat? Yeah. Yes. So Ken, I'm curious. Yeah. Sometimes they people... are in the wrong seat. Yeah. Yeah. And so just making sure that they, that you, uh, what we do here is quarterly conversations, um, checking in regularly with our team to make sure they're happy. They still like what they're doing and maybe, you know, is there, that's how we find out if maybe yeah. someone's more suited or wants a different position within the company. Yeah. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. If you'd like to learn how to scale your own business, be sure to get a copy of Scaling Smart, published by Bigger Pockets and also available on Amazon. I'm Kathy Fedke. Thanks for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.